applications of differentiation. So far we've just been differentiating stuff and then say, done, okay? But now we're gonna take those derivatives and use them. We're gonna apply them to problems. So what we're gonna do is with this table, I wanna sort of break down what it is Wow, that's a really not straight line. What the derivative tells you once you find out what it's equal to. So we're going to look at the derivative and then its implication for the graph. I'm trying to connect this to our previous topic, um, graphing techniques, right? Okay, so what we're going to start with is thinking about the derivative and particularly its, its value at a particular place. So see these derivatives that you've just worked out? Um, what these tell you is if you give me an x, Say x equals 1 for each of these different derivatives, right? If you pop that in, you'll get some number at the end, right? In the same way that with a definite integral, you just got a number at the end rather than a function, okay? So if you go into some derivative, you pop in a number, you substitute it, and you get some result that's positive, okay? If you substitute a value like, say, if I put x equals 1 into here, what do we actually get? You get 15 times 1. Take away 4. So what would your derivative be equal to at that point? We can do arithmetic, right? 15 times 1, take away 4. You're going to get a value of? 15 times 1, uh, 11. 11, thank you. Sarang manages to get there first. So that's a positive value, right? And what that tells you about the graph is that its gradient is going up, right? It's positive. So we would say the word we use for that is it's increasing. Okay, now just so you have a visual cue for this, what does this look like? Well, your function is going up, right? A straight line going up would have a positive derivative. Um, if you had, say, part of a parabola going like that, right, just the, the right-hand part, right, that's also going up, it's increasing. Um, you could have something like, say, you know, this guy here, right, a log function, um, it would look slightly different, it would look like that, but it's still going up. As you go from left to right, it's still increasing, okay, and we get that, we can interpret that from a positive derivative. Okay, uh, let's keep on going down. Let's see what happens if it's not positive. What if it was equal to zero as we get lower and lower and lower? What does that tell us? We actually have a special word for this, right? It, we use the word stationary. What does that mean? Stationary, by the way, it's stationary with an A. Stationary with an E is the stuff I'm holding in my hands, okay? Um, how would you describe that in words? Yeah, so. Is it like, I'm not sure if it's just because, mm -hmm. like, it's the point where there's like a horizontal line where like x equals zero on it? Yeah, okay, so, yeah. so we're getting a horizontal line. I'd probably say horizontal is the key word. You said a few things there, Sophie, right? Um, when you've got, no, it's fine. Um, it's all sort of fitting together. When you've got part of the curve that's horizontal, right? That, that's what we mean by it's stationary. It's not going up, it's not going down. You right, sorry? Good. Um, this is, by the way, not the only thing that it can look like when it's stationary. It could look, for example, I was talking about a parabola before. It could look like the very bottom part of the parabola. Or, if it was an upside down parabola, it could look like the very top part, right? And in fact, there's a few more ways that that can look. There's a few more versions of that, which we're going to explore a little bit um, next period. But that's the idea, that it's stationary. At that one moment, it's horizontal, OK? Would anyone like to take a guess what the next row of the... Decreasing. Ah, very good. Well, in fact, you're, you're sort of already over here, right? So increasing, what, what quality, what quality do I want the derivative to have if I'm going to decide that the graph is decreasing? What can you tell me about the derivative? It's, it's going to be negative, right? Or it's less than zero. That's just two different ways of saying the same thing, right? So what does that look like from left to right? It's gone down, right? So something like this could be a straight line. Um, could be the other part of the parabola we were talking about. Um, or it could be something like, like this. These are all decreasing in the section that I've drawn them, OK? So increasing, stationary, decreasing, they come from the sign, S-I-G-N, the sign of the derivative, OK? Is it positive? Is it 0? Is it negative? OK? Um, there's actually one last thing that the derivative can do. Hmm. Okay, well, hold on a second. So this equals zero. Um, these two don't equal zero. Like positive doesn't equal zero. Negative doesn't equal zero. I'm going to give you a clue. Have a look over at um, have a look at this derivative over here. Or even let's uh, choose a different color. This guy here and this guy here. 
there are some places where the derivative isn't positive, uh, it's not zero, and it isn't negative either. What else could the derivative be if it's not any of these three? Positive or negative. Hmm. Now, if I put in, if I put in an x value, it's, it's going to be one thing. It can't be positive and negative at the same time, right? Hmm. Oh, you mean greater than or equal to? Yeah. So I guess what that would be is if you sort of took two of these categories and sort of like jammed them together. So I'm going to say that that is a sort of different thing, but it's just the combination of two categories we already have. Let me try and tease it out a little more. Just have a look at this very last one, this derivative here. Okay. What's happening when x is equal to negative 1 over 6? Is it, is it What's happening to, look at it closely. Like, evaluate it if you need to. What's going on with that function? Have a look at the derivative. Look at the derivative. Isn't it like 2 an asymptote? So, so what's it? Let's, let's actually do it. By the way, I should have picked this up before. By the way, I this is what our derivative. Do I on dx? Why can right? not equal to? Why cannot? Because it's at the line. Hmm. Okay. So when we do this, right? When you try and evaluate x equals negative one over six here, right? What happens to the derivative? Well, you get dy on dx equals two. The numerator is just one. It's independent of x. There's no x in there, so I substitute. Nothing happens. But on the denominator here, six times negative 1 over 6, <clears throat> six it, that's, just, that's just negative 1, right? Do you agree with that? And then when you plus 1, what's happened to our denominator? It's 0. It's zero. Now think back to when we were doing graphing techniques. What, what does this mean? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to divide by 0, right? Um, this function here, unlike uh, these guys up here, and if you want, if you've got Desmos nearby, right, if your laptop's already open, you're welcome to put this in, right? This function here has, as Moe said, an asymptote, right? Uh, we usually have an asymptote at x equals 0. But because of all this this business here, right, we've had dilation happen. We've also had translation happen. We've actually moved the asymptote. We've moved it here, OK? So what this means is the function doesn't exist, right? The derivative doesn't exist. So what we can say over here is the derivative could be positive, it could be zero, it could be negative, or the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, okay. You should have, should have backed yourself, man. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Well, um, what does it mean for this guy? For this particular example, right? What it means is there's what we call a discontinuity. Discontinuity. There's a point at which the graph does not exist. Okay? Yeah, so if there's like some break in the graph, right? So uh, the hyperbola is another example. See this guy here? Right? In fact, I may even write it underneath. For example, y equals 1 over x, right? If we differentiate that, that's x to the negative 1. You'll get negative 1 over x squared. That'll be your derivative. You try putting in x equals 0. And you'll just say, forget it, you're ending up with division by zero. So the derivative doesn't exist. What that means is the graph itself doesn't exist. Okay? And there is another thing that it could mean, but I'm going to leave that off for now because we've talked through a lot of theory at the moment. I just want you to leave a box here, and um, I will let that simmer in your brain for a little bit to see if you can work out what else could it possibly mean um, apart from the function doesn't exist. Okay?